In this video, we will simulate suprapubic cystostomy using the global surgery box. Suprapubic cystostomy is used when urethral catheterization is not feasible, primarily in cases of urethral stricture or obstruction, or in cases when direct irrigation of the bladder is required, such as for infusion of some chemotherapeutic agents. In this procedure, a catheter is surgically inserted through the skin just above the pubic bone, the extra peritoneal space, and into the bladder. In this video, we demonstrate an open approach. The materials within the global surgery box you will need include metal clips, surgical instruments, suture, baking sheets, the flip-flop or sponge-like square, and the wooden board. These are all provided in the box. Outside of the box, you'll need a Foley catheter of any kind with a urine bag, tap water or any kind of saline or other liquid, a needle and syringe, a scalpel, a pair of gloves, and some tape. First, we will prepare the distended bladder by pouring approximately 500 milliliters of water or saline into one of the gloves and tying the neck of the glove. We then double bag it within the other glove and tie that off as well. We then place the distended bladder on top of one end of the overturned wooden board placed within the empty compartment of the global surge box to create leverage. Then any sort of paper, gauze, or other material is wrapped around the bladder to simulate the surrounding peritoneum. Here we are using the paper in which the surgical gloves were packaged. The double-sided rubber and sponge material is placed on top of this to simulate the rectus and abdominal muscles. Here there is a slit made vertically down the middle of the square to represent the linea alba. This is taped down and then the two layers of baking sheets are placed on top to represent the subcutaneous tissue and skin. These are secured to the sides of the box using the metal clips provided. Ultrasound can be used prior to incision to locate the bladder and ensure no bowel loops are between the bladder and skin, but may not always be feasible in low resource settings. The lower abdominal area is cleaned thoroughly with iodine or another sterile surgical prep. Five milliliters of xylocaine or another local anesthetic is then injected approximately two finger breasts above the pubic synthesis, covering an approximately six centimeter wide transverse line. A transverse incision is then made approximately six centimeters wide at two finger breasts or four to five centimeters above the pubic synthesis, here represented by the border of the box. The incision is spread vertically and an assistant can dab any bleeders. The skin and subcutaneous tissue are gently clamped together at the two midpoints of the horizontal incision and retracted in either direction vertically to open the surgical field. A very small vertical nick is made in the linea alba. The rectus abdominis muscles can be retracted using Lang and Beck retractors to open the incision horizontally, exposing the bladder. At this point, we may visualize the peritoneum, here represented by white paper. In some cases, you may simply see the distended bladder rising upwards into the surgical field. If the exposed bladder is covered by peritoneum, as in this case, the surgeon very gently pushes the peritoneum inferiorly off of the anterior surface of the bladder to expose the external bladder wall, taking great care not to enter the peritoneal space. The surgeon then places two stay stitches through the visible bladder wall, going in the inferior to superior direction on either side of the midline. These are stay sutures that help the surgeon to retain control of the bladder during the catheter insertion and can be held by the assistant or clamped to the surgical field. Clinically, 0 or 2O monofilament would be an appropriate choice, but any suture can be used for the purpose of the simulation. At this point, the surgeon can aspirate with a 5 milliliter syringe to ensure that they draw back urine. This confirms that they are indeed entering the bladder before they make the incision for catheter insertion. The tip of the Foley catheter is loaded onto a hemostat or other curved clamp. The assistant then retracts as the surgeon makes a small vertical stab in the bladder wall with the scalpel. They then slide the Foley through the incision and into the bladder with the curve of the clamp facing superiorly 
unclamp, and guide the Foley further inside the bladder. Once the balloon is securely inside the bladder, the assistant can inflate the balloon of the Foley with a five milliliter syringe. The surgeon then ties the stay sutures around the Foley, keeping appropriate tension to secure the tube while not kinking the lumen of the Foley. This process is repeated with the other stay suture. Now that the Foley is secure, the surgeon proceeds to close in layers. First, the rectus muscle and the subcutaneous tissue are closed with interrupted sutures, taking care not to stitch through the lumen of the Foley. This is done on both sides of the catheter. Approximately two to three stitches should be placed on either side, approximately one centimeter apart. The skin can then similarly be closed on either side of the catheter with several simple interrupted sutures. A subcutaneous stitch could alternatively be used for this purpose. The incision can be bandaged. The Foley should now be draining urine from the bladder here colored yellow with a small amount of iodine. Important intraoperative complications of suprapubic cystostomy include bowel injury and bleeding. Risk of this can be minimized with careful visualization and operative technique. Postoperatively, there can be infection or loss of the catheter tract if the tube is dislodged soon after placement. Catheters should be replaced every two to six weeks. This concludes the simulation of the suprapubic cystostomy using the global surgery box.